Alrighty, guys, despite what that timer says, I am ready to get rocking and a rolling. And I just have such a great webinar plan for you guys tonight. We're going to dive in and talk about really what you can expect on your check ride. And then we're going to open it up and do that mock check ride. And that's what we're going to share with you guys tonight. Just, I mean, this is really where M0A.com kind of made its first mark was in the check ride type arena and helping students better prepare for their check ride because it's always that fear of the unknown sometimes that makes us so nervous with everything. What should I expect? What kind of questions are going to be asked? These are the types of things that we're going to go over with together. And it'll be a great chance for you to interact with myself and this great team here at M0A.com. So whether you are already a private pilot, maybe you're a pilot just starting out, trust me, you are going to walk away from this webinar having learned something new. And that's what I'm most excited about because after all, a good pilot is always learning. It's more than just a trademarked, catchy slogan. It's truly something to live by. So without further ado, and I'll work through this very uh, quickly for you, uh, a little bit about ourselves, m0a.com. I'll work through this very quickly because I know a lot of you were on the webinar we did last week where we went into this in greater detail. This is the great team here at m0a.com on this call now. There's myself, my beautiful wife, Ashley. There's Ella. She better not be on this call. She better be in bed right now. Uh, there's Scott, Matt, and of course, the little one right there is Larry. I call him that with as much affection uh, as possible. No, he's not really my uncle, despite always calling him world famous Uncle Larry. We we're named Outstanding Flight Instructor 2014, 2015, back to back, and where it really all started, myself, my beautiful wife, Ashley, the dogs, Pedo and Magneto, and the goats, of course, Prop, Rudder, and Strut. The aviation-themed household we are. Um, some of our books that you can see here, a lot of what you're going to hear tonight is straight from the book, Pass Your Private Pilot Checkride, which is an ebook and an audio book and an awesome one at that. Imagine having an audio book, being able to plug into your iPhone, your computer, whatever it may be. And listen to hours of checkride material where I do like I'm going to do with you tonight. Ask a question, pause, let you think about the answer. In this case, actually, you're going to be able to tell me the answer by typing it in. And then I give you the correct answer. That's all available to you on that audio book as well as the ebook. Of course, if you've seen the movie Flying Again, I hope you absolutely Loved it. If you haven't, flyingagainmovie.com to check it out and learn more. Worked with eight rusty pilots on the process of getting them not only current, but proficient and most importantly, flying again. So it was great stuff. After all these books, it led to us having what's now the number one rated online ground school with the crazy guarantee of pass your check ride or I'll pay for it. We've extended that to pass your written test or I'll pay for it. All these videos were literally just recently reshot in 4K, four times the quality of HD. You've seen our videos on YouTube. We get very detailed. We actually take apart an altimeter like you can see here. A lot of great in-cockpit video. A lot of my plain English teaching style. And I always tell people, if you don't like my teaching style, you probably won't like the ground school. You need to like my energy and my ability to take those things into plain English and hopefully help things make sense for you, because after all, that's what's most important. Does this complex subject now make sense to you based on how we explain it? So that's a little bit about us. I just wanted to work through quickly so we can get to what's most important, which is the content. And I'm going to do my best to work through this, by the way, how this works. For those of you, if this is your first webinar, I can't hear you. I can't see you, but you can communicate with us. In your handy dandy go to webinar control panel underneath the questions tab or on your iPad or tablet, tap that question mark there. You can type in the question like I shared with you, Matt, Scott, Ashley, and Larry are in there taking your questions, typing back answers to you. And 
when we get to the mock check ride portion, I am going to ask these actual check ride questions. I am going to hit the mute button on my microphone, let you guys type your answers in, and then I'll go ahead and I'll uh, give you guys the actual correct answer on that. So before we get to that though, let's talk about what to expect on your private pilot check ride. First off, who is really on this webinar? Who on this webinar has yet to take a private pilot check ride? You can just say me if it applies to you or whatever, or uh, maybe you're in your training, a check ride's coming up, you're, the check ride's on the horizon, or man, 2016 is my year to get that check ride done. Who are some of these? I see Paul B, Sean M, Brian P, Mario C, Elmer Z, Brian C, uh, Rafter, six lessons in, awesome. Kent, Michael, Nick, Emery, Norman, David, Laura, Justin, David, Michael, Dan, Dwayne, Stuart, Harold, geez, Jordan, William, Cody, so many, Jack, Scott, Vanya, so many people, Denton, that are in that boat of it's time. 2016 is your year. I hope is your mindset right now. That you're thinking, this, this is it. This is the year I become a private pilot or a sport pilot, whatever it is you're, actually, you're, you're pursuing right now. 2016 is your year. I hope and I pray that you use this webinar as your catalyst, and this will help to light a fire underneath of you to knock out that private pilot check ride and become and earn that private pilot certificate. Depending on where you're at in your training, I may ask some questions tonight that you're going to leave you scratching your head. And this is the same thing I share with all my online ground school members. By the way, we do a mock check ride webinar once a month with all, all our online ground school members. We do four webinars a month, or yes, four webinars a month. Three of them I teach a topic, and one of them is always a mock check ride. And one thing I always share with my online ground school members on those mock check rides is, listen, it's okay if you didn't get them all right. Aren't you glad you got these questions wrong here with me rather than when you're paying 400, 500, in some cases in, in South Florida and parts of California, 600 bucks for a check ride. I'd rather you screw up here with me than on the big day when all that money as is at stake for sure. So what can you expect on your private pilot check ride? If you learn nothing else from this webinar, I want you to remember this. Your check ride is your first flight as PIC, as pilot in command. What do I mean by that? What I mean is your instructor would not have signed you off if he or she did not believe you were ready for your check ride. Your instructor, whether they know it or not, needs to maintain at least an 80% pass rate. Otherwise, the FAA comes knocking at your door and says, hey, Joe Smith, CFI, I realized that you had three students fail their check ride recently. Maybe it's time you need another little checkup with us, the FAA. And trust me, no, no uh, uh, flight instructor wants that for sure. So your instructor would not have signed you off if he or she didn't think you were ready. Because not only is your 600 bucks at stake, but their good name is at stake with the FAA as well. So your check ride, if you look at it as my check ride examiner is my first passenger. And that's how you need to treat it because your instructor said you're good to go. You just have to fly with this one other person who just look at them as if they're your first passenger, give them a thorough passenger briefing and have a good time and show them all your flight maneuvers. And that's it. Of course, I make it sound so simple, but when you look at it in that mindset, it really helps you make that mindset shift sometimes. Let's talk about what to bring to the check ride before we get to our mock check ride here. Business casual dress is usually pretty safe. We're not looking for suit and tie type stuff here, but a nice polo shirt tucked into some khakis and some boat shoes is totally acceptable. You want to be professional, but you don't want to be uncomfortable. Check rides in Florida in August. Don't sweat like crazy. You dress comfortable to the conditions that you're in, obviously. Bring every flight training book you own. 
A lot of people don't realize this. But on your oral exam, the verbal part of your check ride where you sit down across from the examiner, and they, they literally, it's an oral exam. They ask you these questions. You are allowed to look some things up. What do I mean? You are allowed to look up a few items, let's say. Now, they're not going to let you look up. They ask you 10 questions. They're not going to let you look up all 10 of them. But you've got to get out of jail free card or two. You'll probably be able to look up one or two things if you don't know the answer. And when you don't know something, don't try to make anything up. Don't try to just kind of dance around the subject. Don't be like that. We all have that friend who just reads the headlines in the newspapers but doesn't know the whole story. Don't just give them the headline. They're going to dig deeper into the story. Trust me on this. That's called a check ride pitfall. Don't do that. Your answer when you don't know something is, well, Mr. or Miss Examiner, I know my instructors told me this before. Um, I can't quite remember it right now, but... I know where to look it up. I know where to find the answer because part of your exam isn't knowing everything because you don't have to know everything. But if you can prove to your examiner that you're resourceful, that I don't have all the answers, but I know where to look it up. Geez, that's a mantra of mine. As a flight instructor, I do that. You might ask a question tonight on this webinar that I may not know the answer, but I, I, I know where I can start to look that up and get you the proper answer. You need to take that same approach. Now, you can't do that 50% of the time on your check ride. you got to know your stuff, but you can be good for one, two, maybe three questions. You can get away with that. Don't know the answer, but I know where to look it up. Obviously, bring your written test, the actual copy that gets stamped and sealed, your exam fee. You want to hear something funny? And again, I just got back from uh, DPE school myself in Oklahoma City. I'm actually awaiting my um, – everything's done. My, my tests are all done. I'm just waiting on a phone call uh, essentially to – announce my designation now as a check ride examiner. So very excited about that. And it's funny that one thing we're learning when we're in Oklahoma City, this is taught by the FAA. They go, yeah, most of the check ride examiners, all they want is cash. So it's very funny that you're effectively a subcontractor for the US government and all you want is cash. So I wonder where that money goes. I, I always find that fascinating, but I guarantee all your check ride examiners, that is a cash money business. So be mindful of that and ask. Of course, please bring your photo ID, your logbook, endorsed, your, your instructor will cover you on that, and your medical. If you do what's called IACRA, if you don't know what that is, um, you'll hear it down the road. Write down what's called your FTN number and your application ID, FTN number and application ID. In all my students, I literally write it in the back of their logbook because you're going to need that number and your username and password. Might as well write that down too because they make you have a crazy username and a crazy password with a capital and a character and a numeric and um, all this sort of stuff. So you probably have to write that one down as well. So what to bring. Now what to expect. When you walk into your check ride, it's usually 30 minutes of paperwork to start. In fact, the check ride doesn't even start until they tell you the words, the test has begun. They'll literally tell you those words. They have to. But there's usually 30 minutes of paperwork before that because they're going to go through your logbook to first off make sure you qualify for this. Were all your cross countries really the proper distances? Do you have the proper amount of nighttime, the proper amount of hood time? Have you done your three takeoffs and landings to a full stop at a towered airport? And they're going to try to check all of these boxes to make sure you accomplished everything. And then they're going to look at your written test and your IACRA form or your 8710 form and log in using that FTN number and your application ID number. And they're going to make sure everything is properly endorsed. And they're going to make sure you even qualify to take this test. And then once they tell you the words, the test has begun. You're looking at a one hour oral exam minimum. You could know, you would have to know, you'd have to bat 100% to do a one hour on the ground 
oral exam. You just you would have to be that good. One hour flight minimum. Average IC is like 1.5 on the Hobbs is a pretty normal private pilot check ride. So just be ready for that as well. When's the last time you did a 1.5 hour flight lesson? You might want to, if you've just been doing short little one hour lessons with your instructor, you might want to see because I know how tired I get as an instructor after doing an hour and a half lesson. Imagine how you might feel as the student in that stressful environment. And then after that, there's 30 minutes of paperwork. Hopefully it's all good paperwork, doing temporary airman certificates and taking pictures and making everybody happy. But truth be told, with pre-flight and post-flight and all this stuff in between, I mean, you schedule a 9 a.m. check ride, plan on being there till 12, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. It's, it's a half a day event. So plan on that. It's not your typical flight lesson. The day of your check ride, nothing else should be on your calendar except your check ride. And that's what you're to focus on. And we can get, I've got so much content out there on what to do the day before the check ride. And really what I call my number one check ride tip about making a win card. And there's a lot of stuff out there I can share. But in the scope of this webinar, that, that's really what to expect. Now, let's talk for a moment about your cross country. Notice I have cross country in quotations there because it's, a real cross country in the sense that you'll plan it, but you will not actually fly the entire cross country. Your check ride examiner will probably call you or your instructor and say, hey, um, hey, Harold, Harold, I want you to plan me a flight up to the cross city airport, please. And you'll say, okay, Mr. or Ms. Examiner, I can absolutely get you that flight out there to cross city. And you'll plan it. You'll make your VFR checkpoints, all that sort of stuff. Great. You'll fly maybe to the first checkpoint, prove that you can find your first checkpoint, and then he will or she will divert you. And you gotta be ready to divert. Plan your cross country by hand, please. I know my technology guys out there, my iPad guys are scoffing right now. I've seen more check ride examiners take iPads away on check rides because your the applicants are using it as a crutch. It cannot be a crutch. It cannot be your primary and only means of navigation. You've got to show that you know how to navigate the old-fashioned way when technology fails. Plan it by hand. Manual E6B, whatever it may be, because you should be able to explain every number. That checkride examiner is going to put his or her finger down on a number and say, um, hey, Scott, Scott, how did you come to that number there? It's your, your ground speed in a climb, let's say. And you're going to say, well, I looked, I, um, uh, how did you come up with it? Well, you need to be able to explain it. And saying, well, my iPad did it for me is not a good enough explanation. You need to be able to explain it further. And calculating those numbers is a great way. And showing your work is a great way to know how to do that. Now, you can plan it all by hand and then go over it and do it again with the iPad just as some redundancy. By all means, absolutely. But they're going to want to see that you know how to do it the old-fashioned way as well. So just be ready for that. Now gets to the exciting part. Here comes the quiz, the mock check ride. I am going to ask you five actual FAA check ride questions. Every question I'm about to ask you came from a real check ride. I've sat in on hundreds of private instrument commercial CFI check rides, and all these questions came from actual FAA private pilot check rides, and I'm gonna share those with you now, now this is exactly, well, almost exactly how I do it on our end of month webinars that I do with our online ground school members. Again, we do a mock check right at the end of every month. It's very, very fun. Now, obviously, you guys are a much larger group because we open this up to the public. When I do it for our, uh, our ground school members, it's a much smaller, more intimate type group. 
uh, so or able to read everybody's answers and everything else. So if I do not say your name, please don't be heartbroken. If I don't read your answer, please don't be heartbroken. Just understand there's a ton of people on this webinar. I'll read the first little few that come in, uh, but please don't be heartbroken if you don't hear your name or your answer is read there. There will be a Q&A time uh, after this webinar that we can uh, – chat about those sort of things. So let's dive into it again, how this is going to work. I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm going to let you type in your answer into your handy dandy go to webinar control panel underneath the questions tab. I know it says questions. You're going to type in your answers there. The question mark on your tablet or whatever, you can tap that and the same thing works that way. So, and by the way, there's some hard questions in here. I'm not going easy on you guys. I picked some fairly challenging questions for you guys, no doubt. So be ready for that. Let's dive into it, guys. Question number one. You and I are demonstrating spatial disorientation. You're underneath the foggles or the hood. I am just putting you all over the place, climbing left turn, descending right turn, all over the place to become disorientated. Now I tell you the words, recover. You're to look up at your instruments and recover, but what instrument do you look at first? What is the first instrument you look at when recovering from spatial disorientation? I'm gonna mute my mic while you guys type your answers in. Let's see. What kind of answers we have in here? Um, thank you, Doug M. I only expect the best from you, Doug. Hey, Jason C., shout out to you again. Absolutely. Uh, Ferry, absolutely. Tony B., I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, Stephen S., Timothy J., absolutely. And, of course, my buddy Ron and Phil, absolutely. Alan T. Keith S. I see a lot of familiar names. This is great. And a lot of familiar names are the ones getting it right too, which, which tells me, hey, we're doing our job here at M0A.com. Most of those names I just read were current uh, online ground school members or Pilot Center Circle members. So it's good to know we're doing our job. You ready for this? What is the first instrument to look at when recovering from spatial disorientation? It's not what you think. It is your airspeed indicator. For all of you that said attitude indicator, it's not a bad guess, but let me tell you why it's incorrect. You see, your attitude indicator is only rated up to 60 degrees of bank. Beyond 60 degrees of bank, your attitude indicator is prone to tumble. Keep in mind, how does an attitude indicator work? It is just, it's gyroscopic. It is just a top spinning inside of there. Like if you had a top spinning on your desk right now and you take your desk and put it at a 60 degree angle, the top is going to go flying off and tumble onto the floor. Your attitude indicator works in a very similar manner. So you're, if you are in serious spatial disorientation, that you're really in a jam and just all over the place, your attitude indicator could have tumbled and you might risk putting the aircraft and trying to repair it and put it into a hazardous attitude that you're not really in because you're getting incorrect readings from your attitude indicator. Now you say, Jason, okay, great. You made your point. That makes sense. But why the airspeed indicator? Well, there are only two things that can go wrong in spatial disorientation. I stall the airplane and could end up spinning it, or I test the structural integrity of my aircraft and risk it breaking apart. Let me explain. If I'm under the hood, I've got my eyes closed, or I'm under the hood, and you're putting me all around these climbing turns, descending turns, and you say, Jason, recover. I look at the airspeed indicator first. Why? Because there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's only two issues, two things that can go wrong. Either A, I'm too slow, my nose is too high, I need to lower it and add power. Or B, I'm too fast, I need to reduce power, slow down, and then slowly bring my nose back to level. 
I can tell whether I'm climbing or descending based on my airspeed indicator. I'm either too slow or I'm too fast because in that situation, there's only two things that can go wrong. I stall the airplane and could end up spinning it or I'm going way too fast and I'm going to test the structural integrity of my wings and elevator and, and vertical stabilizer. You understand that? I'm going to fix that and get the airplane level and then I'll double check with my ABS indicator, my altimeter, my heading and those sort of things and make those cross checks. But it starts with your airspeed indicator. And yes, for those of you that said, even in the G1000, you can risk tumbling that attitude indicator all the same. All right, let's continue on with this here. Question number two, give me two reasons why a pilot must file a flight plan. Two reasons why you must, you have to, File a flight plan. This is a tough one. I'll mute my mic while you guys type your answers in. This is a tough one. Steve S. Yeah, that's one. Timothy J. That's one. Dan C, that's both I was looking for. Nice work. Ron M, that's both I was looking for. Nice work. Jim C, again, I'm just reading, just continuing to read off ground school members here. I love it. That's great. Beautiful stuff here. Continuing. Uh, and then, again, listen, if you don't know this, again, wouldn't you rather have no clue here with me tonight than on your check ride when you paid 600 bucks? It's a lot cheaper to do it here with me tonight. It's great. Um, Phil B, absolutely. He's a PIC member too. Um, Brian P, absolutely. Alan B, beautiful. Alan B, recent ground school member who just soloed. Awesome stuff. All right, you ready for the answer? I'm going to keep moving forward for time's sake here. Answer number two to this. What are two reasons why a pilot must file a flight plan? When crossing over an ADIS, the Air Defense Identification Zone, which is international flying. It's called a DVFR flight plan. And the other is when the weather conditions require it. If you're going to file IFR, for those of you who want to go on to your instrument rating, you might say, Jason, that's a dumb question. You just asked me about IFR, and this is a private pilot checkride webinar. This question came up on a recent private pilot check ride. And that's why I want to share it with you guys because it's not a question you would normally think to have asked. But anytime you want to fly international VFR, you need to be on at least a D VFR flight plan. And then when weather conditions require it for IFR flight now. Interesting fact, did you know that a D VFR flight plan only does, is only good for crossing the border. A DVFR flight plan does not have the search and rescue feature like a regular VFR flight plan. So if you want both, you would need to file, I'm going to the Bahamas tomorrow, let's say, VFR. I would need to file a DVFR flight plan to, to penetrate the ADAs to fly internationally. And then if I wanted the search and rescue feature, I would need to also file a regular VFR flight plan. How crazy is that? I, it's something I literally learned myself that DVFR does not have a search and rescue feature. Good to know with that. Certainly. So again, two reasons why we need a, to file a flight plan. You ready? Question number three, wind direction on METAR and TAFs. Is it true or magnetic? When you look at the wind direction on your METAR and your TAF, are you reading true in reference to true north or in reference to magnetic north? Have you even really ever thought about that? Well, I'm glad we're thinking about it now before your check ride. I'm going to mute my mic while you guys type some more answers in.
Hey, Aaron H. Great. Alan B. Jake H. Nope, not quite. Uh, David E. Ron M. Scott T. Correct. Raquel D. Eduardo. Derry. Paul. Paul K. Alan D. John H. Zach D. All correct in there. And again, some of you guys might have same name, same last initial. We got a lot of people on this webinar. Obviously, I don't want to give away everyone's last name uh, and that sort of stuff. Um, Vanya, good. Michael M, good. All right, you ready for this? Let's reveal. I'm going to give you a great way. I see Alan already shared it. A great way to remember this. Wind direction on metars and taps. Is it true or magnetic? Metars and taps are in reference to true north. Things like your ATIS, your ASOS, your wind checks. If you ask for a wind check on short final are magnetic. Generally speaking, if you're reading it, it's true. If you're hearing it, it's magnetic. Remember that. That's generally speaking. There's, there's a few exceptions, but I highly doubt there, it's very advanced. It's not private pilot stuff. We could talk about it one day like on an instrument or a commercial pilot webinar. It's a little bit more advanced than the level we're at right today. But generally speaking, if you're reading it, it's true. I read METARS. I read TAFs. If I'm hearing it through my headset, ATIS, ASOS, tower gives me a wind check. It's magnetic. Good little cheat sheet to remember all that. Question number four. What traffic pattern would I make for runway 18? Or better asked, runway 18, is it right traffic or left traffic? You got a 50-50 shot. Runway 18, is it right traffic or left traffic? And you should be able to tell me just by looking at this diagram alone. I'll mute my mic, let you guys think about it. Chris T, Doug M, Emery W, Shane R, Claudia C, Raquel D, Alan B, Dustin S. Dustin, I can't wait to show you the video we shot uh, about the report you sent in, by the way, here soon. Keith S, Chris S, Paul K, Tony N, Laura L, uh, Rocco, Jordan H, Denton, you guys are all right. Again, please don't feel bad if I'm not able to read your name. We got a ton of people on here. We'd be here all night if I had acknowledged everybody. Again, if you want that kind of personal interaction, we can do that in the online ground school. But um, So let's talk about this because the answer is just the exact same slide here. Runway 1A, and again, this is not only on check ride, this is actually a written test diagram. For those of you who haven't taken your written test, this is figure 51 straight from the written test, private pilot. The wind cone is what we're looking at here. This is telling us our traffic pattern, but how? First off, where is runway 18? Well, we know, <coughs> excuse me, we know it runs through here, right? This is north, so this end down here is 3-6. This end up here is 1-8, right? Because I'd be landing 1-8. Now, I'd be landing with a tailwind. I totally get that, but I just wanted it for a reference. I'm landing 1-8. These little L shapes here show base and final. So that means I'd be out here on a right downwind, turning right base, and then turning final for 1-8. If I asked runway 3-6, it'd be left traffic. I'd still be out here. I'd be on a left downwind, follow my cursor, left downwind, turning left base because this L shows me the base, and then I'd turn final. Here's nine and two seven. They're trying to keep me on this side of the airport. And actually the written test question goes like this. What side of the airport are they trying to get you to avoid? Well, for three, six and one eight, they're keeping you over here. So they, they don't want you out over here to the east. And for 927, they're trying to keep you north. 
up over here. They don't want you flying right over here for some reason. So what area are they trying to keep you out? Really, they don't want me flying down over here. That's for sure. Maybe there's there's some obstacle or something or some neighborhood where the HOA complained about noise that they don't want me flying over. That's kind of how the question reads. But you always look at these. They show you the base and the final. The base and the final. Pretty simple. When you look at it like that, go, oh, now I kind of get it. All right, guys, you ready? Fifth and final question. It's a tough one. And then we're going to wrap this thing up and take your checkride questions. Any questions you have regarding the checkride? Question number five is this. Name three things that fall under the category of preventative maintenance. What are three items that fall under the category of preventative maintenance. This one takes a little bit of typing. So I'm going to mute my mic and let you guys type some of those answers in. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Three things that fall under that category of preventative maintenance. Give me one second. I'm going to sip my tea. I feel another cough coming on here. Sorry. All right, all better. Sorry about that. <clears throat> From our last webinar, I was up so late and talking so much, I lost my voice and got a little bit sick and everything else. So let's read through some of these here. Colton, certainly. Mac, certainly. Um, Dan M., yep. Um, Matt H., yeah. Alan D, absolutely. I'm sorry, Al D. After that, Alan T. Yeah. Yeah, some good. All, all good stuff here. All good stuff here. I'm just going to share some of mine with you. Replenish any fluids, whether it be oil or hydraulic. You can actually clean and gap your spark plugs. How about change tires or repack bearings? How about change the oil, change lights. These are things that fall under preventative maintenance, the things that you, the owner operator, can do to your aircraft that don't have, they, they need to be shown in the logbook, but you don't have to have that mechanic there to do these things. Now, please, before you don't just go out and change your oil, pay your mechanic to do it once, twice, three times with you, or I did that. I, I first off, I watched them do it once or twice. Then I paid them like, will you sit there and watch me do it now this time around? And then I got comfortable enough where I was just simply doing it on my own. But changing your oil is a great thing to learn how to do on your aircraft. And change lights, things like that. I mean, <clears throat> obviously learn it with your mechanic first, but preventative maintenance, the definition, these are things that you, the owner of the aircraft, can actually do. Very, very popular check ride question. So let me ask you this. How did you do? Listen, if you got five for five, you are awesome. You are probably already a private pilot. If not, you are going to knock your private pilot check ride out of the park. You got four out of five or three out of five. Now we know some areas we need to work on. And geez, maybe you, <coughs> excuse me one more time. Maybe you really enjoyed this whole mock check ride thing. And geez, I wish we could do this, you know, every, you know, once a month with Jason on top of the webinars. You're really liking the webinar teaching model. You really, you like this sort of stuff. You know, maybe like the idea of jumping in our online ground school and these sort of things. So if you saw our webinar last week, you know exactly what I'm about to say, but I'm only doing this once all of 2016 and it's the month of January. 
It's right now. If you sign up, for our online ground school this month, by January 31st, you have to sign up for any of our online ground school membership levels, bronze, silver, gold, or even if you're already a pilot, you can sign up for the pilot's inner circle to get access to just the webinars and some great training. But you get access to all our private pilot videos, over 400 4K ultra high def flight training videos. Again, you love our YouTube videos. You love these webinars. You're going to love all that. If you sign up tonight or in the month of January, I will give you all of our books for free. The Secret of Perfect Landings, Pass Your Private Pilot Checkride, ebook and audiobook. I'll give you Pass Your Instrument Pilot Checkride, ebook and audiobook for the future. In Flight Emergencies, The Far Aim in Plain English, Larry's book, The Pilot's Primer for Medications. So much great material for you guys. In fact, if you added all, they're not all pictured here. If you added all eight of the books I'm going to give you to the, to the shopping cart tonight, you'd spend over 300 bucks. I'm going to give them to you all for free tonight just for signing up and becoming an online ground school member. If you're on this webinar and you're saying, hey, Jason, I'm already a member. Well, don't worry. I got you covered. Merry Christmas because you're getting all the books too just for being a member here today. Go to groundschoolacademy.com and get signed up. <clears throat> groundschoolacademy.com. Click on the enroll now, join now, join today link and get signed up. As an online ground school gold member, you get our FAA approved part 61 and part 141 comprehensive ground school, all the HD videos, unlimited FAA written practice test with the new FAA written test question database. Because remember, we're moving towards the ACS and change that written test up. I can actually endorse you for your FAA written. Maybe you don't even have a CFI yet. Well, I can provide you that endorsement you need for your FAA written. As a gold member, every Monday night. You liked this webinar? We do a webinar similar to it every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you miss it, you can catch the recording. So you watch the videos all week. We all reconvene Monday night and have a great conversation. It's a much smaller group than this. We learn everybody's names and, and kind of build a community and a friendship that way. The weekly webinars and mock check rides. You get access to our FAA written test boot camp. 12 videos geared specifically just for the written test. Literally, you can watch one a day before you take your written test to work through it. You get access to our M0A mentorship from myself, Larry, uh, you know, Matt, Scott, this team here at M0A.com really can be your mentor and your accountability partner where we can say, hey, hey, Laura, hey, Tony, hey, David, how's that written test coming, man? Hey, how you've been working on that medical. I know you need to get that medical done. Let's get that done so you can solo. Geez, let's knock out your night cross country. You just need that for your check ride. And let us be your mentor and your accountability partner. And of course, you get our pass your check ride or we'll pay for it guarantee. And you can see what the silver membership offers, the bronze membership, and the pilot's inner circle membership, which is just the webinars. And that is geared more towards, okay, I was a gold member. I'll use Laura as an example. Laura, you become a gold member. This is great. You're a gold member for two, three months. You pass your check ride. Awesome stuff. You're not quite ready to start an instrument, but you don't want to give up the webinars because you want to live out a good pilot is always learning mantra. So you then go and become a pilot's inner circle member where you don't need the full ground school, but geez, I want that M0A community every Monday night on these webinars, a chance to interact and, and just learn something from, from myself and the team here at M0A.com. So pilot's inner circle is geared more so towards individuals who are already a pilot and want to live out that good pilot is always learning type mantra. Again, groundschoolacademy.com. If you love the free videos we put out there on YouTube, you're going to really love the videos when you pay for them. I mean, like I said, taking apart an altimeter, showing you steep turns. We've got some great animation stuff going in there as well as showing you in the cockpit. It is the best ground school out there, um, period. I, I stand behind that 100%. I have that pass your check ride or we'll pay for it guarantee. I'm talking thousands of check rides passed. I've had two people ever take me up on that offer. It's, we have an insane check ride pass rate. We know how to do three things, pass a written test, pass a check ride, but most importantly, 
we help you become a safe real world pilot. You see in the online ground school, I say, uh, I say to you, hey, Tony, hey, Jordan, you're going to need to know this for your written test. I say, hey, Ira, hey, Nicholas, you need to know this for your check ride. Or I say, hey, Oliver, hey, Chad, you need this to be a safe real world pilot. And we break it all into plain conversational English for you. Again, you get signed up for any level of membership. These are just some of the books. I'm going to send you all eight of our books for free um, just as a sign-up bonus. It's huge. Again, groundschoolacademy.com. Now, if you get signed up tonight and you want something to read this week, guys, you can download all those books tonight. Here's how it works. And if you're an active online ground school member already, as soon as you're signed up and you are logged in, you've got your username, you've got your password, and you're logged in. Go to groundschoolacademy.com forward slash books. You have to be logged in, and this link will open up once you're logged in. You type that in there, and you got to be logged in, and you'll see it there. You can download that zip file. From there, you can unzip it, and the PDFs are yours to put on your iPad. The audiobooks are yours to put on your iPhone, to burn to a CD, to take to Staples and print out the PDFs. I don't care what you do with it. All I care is you take it and you learn something from it. Groundschoolacademy.com forward slash books once you're actually in there and all signed up. I'll go back to this a uh, little bit so you guys can see all that. But you need to go to groundschoolacademy.com first to get all signed up for that. Guys, it is your time now. Any questions you guys have, I am here to take them. I obviously, again, there's a bunch of people on this webinar. I can't take everybody's question. But I'm going to do my best to take as many questions as possible. Any sales questions, I'm going to let Ashley and Matt and Scott take. Um, and I'm going to try to take the specific flight training questions for you guys. Unless it's a, a sales question, kind of everybody's asking, I'll generally do it. Of course, last time, last week when I had this offer, we crashed groundschoolacademy.com because everybody um, uh, just went on and signed up to become a member to get that great bonus. I know Ashley kind of boosted everything, so I hope that uh, wasn't the case this time. Again, they say it's a good problem to have. Um, doesn't feel so good though sometimes when you're trying to get everybody uh, over there. So listen guys, um, any questions you have related to a check ride flight training, it doesn't matter. I am here to take those questions for you. Let's go through them. JB says, is it too early to begin flight training at 13 years old? Absolutely not, JB. My friend, I started at the age of 12. My friend, um, you start now, you're going to have an amazing aviation career ahead of you. Uh, again, I started at the age of 12. I wasn't taking, you can't solo until you're 16. So it's not like I was taking lessons every week. I was taking one lesson, you know, a quarter or two just to, just to kind of keep proficient. But I asked for a flight simulator, you know, flight, gosh, it was Microsoft flight simulator back then and, and, and flying that and just trying to stay on webinars like this and learn as much as I can about aviation. That is what's so very important um, with that. So um, great, um, great things with, uh, with that. So um, let's um, see. Again, uh, I'll take this question because I, I didn't want to take sales questions. I wanted the guys to handle it. I see a few of these. Um, same question. Ira asked, like, how long or what day of the week does the ground school start? The ground school is at your pace. So every Monday night, I do a weekly workshop webinar or a mock check ride on various topics that, that you guys ask for and those sort of things. But the videos are there. You can start any day. You can end any day. You can just try it for a month, try it for two months. We've had people in there for years. It's whatever works best for you. But it is always, it's a rolling curriculum. You do it at your pace. So uh, work through uh, work through that um, on that. So just great stuff here, guys. Let's continue to... Uh, um, <laughs> I'm just reading some of these. Uh, Jason C, I see what you wrote there. That's funny. Um, uh, Vanya, I'll take this question. This is a good one. Are your tests taken in a room with your exam? So it, 
Are your tests taken in a room with an examiner? Is your examiner the same throughout your exam? So, uh, Vanya, here's how it works. First off, your written test, it is a proctored test, meaning you're observed when you do it, but they observe you from like a webcam or something. They do have to legally observe you to make sure you're not cheating and you're in a private room by yourself. But no, I mean, you can do that at most flight schools, most tech colleges. Uh, you can take your, your written test at, and we have a list that we can send you places you can go to. Your check ride, uh, like myself, I'm soon to be a DPE, designated pilot examiner. Vanya, you could come to me and do your check ride in a couple months, hopefully, when I get that phone call. But you can go to really whoever you want, because as a DPE, you're an independent contractor for the FAA. So Vanya, you wouldn't, um, you could, like I had the same person for private and instrument and then commercial, I went to a different guy. So you can, you can go the same guy or gal, you can go to a different person. It's up to you. Did you have a good experience with that person? Did you feel the test was fair? Was the pricing model okay? Did you enjoy it? Did you pass? That's usually a good indication too. Um, so it's not, it doesn't have to be the same. You have some choice in that. The only check ride where you don't have choice is your CFI because that is done specifically by a person from the FAA. There's very few DPEs that are designated to do CFI check rides, but we got a long way to go um, on that. Um, um, uh, documentation, uh, oh, airplane documentation for uh, the check ride, Marcio. Absolutely. It falls under our AERO acronym, our Airworthiness Registration Operators Manual, weight and balance. Of course, we need to have. Um, a lot of times, Marcio, check ride examiners that are new to that airplane will sometimes like to see the maintenance logs. I know when I become a DPE and I work with a new flight school, I want to make sure, did they do their annual? Are they doing their 100 hour? Are there any major squawks on this airplane that I need to know about? So I'm going to ask to look at those sort of things. And once I'm familiar with the airplane, familiar with the operation and know they do things above, you know, above and beyond the standard, it'll be all right. But you might want to be ready to do that. So that being said, you might need to know your way through an aircraft engine and airframe logbook as well. Just something else to um think about. JD, um, when will we have our commercial training? JD, there's some videos in there now. My friend, if you sign up by January 31st, you're going to be highly impressed because it's going to be, it'll probably be more than 50% done by then. If John, our director, is on this webinar right now, he's going to say, why did Jason say that? Now he's going to really, uh, now we've got to really get his butt in gear, but um, that'll be good. We, we need that sometimes. So JD, January 31st, if that way, if you want to get the promo and then have a good bit of the commercial ground school to go through, but it'll, it'll be 100% done by the end of February, 50% um, by January 31st. And obviously, as you work through it, videos will keep adding in there. So literally, I shot five commercial pilot videos today. I mean, they're, they're getting knocked out quickly. So um, Benson asked a question. He said, diversion procedure. Could you explain the best way of doing this, please? I teach Benson to create a wind card because you really need to answer a few questions. You need to first off, get headed in the right direction and then answer two questions. How long is it going to take me to get there? And do I have enough fuel? Matt, I'm sure you're already reading my mind that I'm asking for that link. The video is called my number one check ride tip. It involves creating of a wind card. I know Benson isn't the only one who will want it. Matt, will you please post that in the public chat so everybody can watch that video in the near future? Um, the video is called my number one check ride tip. It's all about cross country diversions and it shows you how to create a wind card. It is a game changer. Um, it'll make your diversion so much easier. Michael says, what's the best flight simulator for Mac? X-Plane 10 right now. Could be X-Plane 11 by tomorrow, who knows? The newest version of X-Plane. Um, absolutely here. Um, Dan M says, so I want to go all the way up to ATP and fly out there. Uh, what are your views about going to a college, um, that's certified for all this stuff? Listen, Dan, I did my private, my instrument part 61. I did collegiate aviation for commercial CFI, CFII. Um, 
I love collegiate aviation, my friend. It is a great way to do it. It is a, an immersive experience. It's a great chance to be around some like-minded people. Um, if you can afford it, if you can get the funding and the financing for it, by all means, it is a wonderful uh, experience. So uh, that's cool. Robbie says, thanks for the advice. Last week, I feel more comfortable with my flight instructor that just got his certificate. Robbie, I remember chatting about that. And I'm glad we had that conversation, Robbie. And I'm glad you shared that because... Um, you, when you share things like this, you're not the only person that has that question. And I'm thankful for you asking it because there's other people that came to me after that webinar and said, geez, Jason, I really like that advice you gave because I'm kind of dealing with the same thing. I didn't, you know, I don't want to like feel, uh, I feel bad even talking about it because I, uh, they're a good person, you know, and, and you're right. Uh, so I appreciate you, uh, uh, sharing all of that. So Let's see. Um, are the Monday webinars recorded for replay? Absolutely. They are. I get them up the same night, usually. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, Scott T., um, I'm about all about being a safe pilot, but I have a work schedule that allows me a little time off. How do you feel about condensed learning? For example, after the written, completing the private pilot uh, in about a two-week period. Um, I'm... Scott, you're going to need more of a foundation than, than just a written test done to do it in two weeks. Because, Scott, that is assuming two weeks of no maintenance issues, no family issues at your house, um, no kids sick, no you know wife sick, anything like that. I don't know what your family situation is. That's assuming two weeks of perfect weather. That's assuming you can get the check ride examiner scheduled. I would – a more realistic goal, Scott, would be like – Two weeks to solo. I know that sounds silly, but that's probably a more realistic goal. And maybe you can get the solo done in a week and a half and then start on some cross-country type work and be a little bit further along. But I, I know programs out there advertise like two weeks to private pilot and, and, and stuff like that. But that is – it just – it has to be the perfect storm, my friend. Everything has to be so perfect. So um, – that's that's my opinion with that. It's not that I, I'm not that I'm knocking your idea. It's it's valiant of you, but I like I, I'm all ask my wife Ashley. She's on this webinar. I am all about crazy goals. Trust me. But there's a difference between crazy goals and setting realistic goals because crazy goals are no fun when you can't meet them. So that's my uh, opinion um, with that. So, um. Kent, yeah, on the FAA's website, you can find lists of DPEs in your area. Um, designated Pilot Examiner Search, I believe it's called. Uh, and then you'll need to search for, you know, single engine land airplanes. And usually just asking around the airport is usually the best thing because that's just a database. It's nice to ask around the airport and get the lowdown on, ooh, this person's really tough or, ooh, this person uh, does, uh, does this. Uh, excuse me. Alan says, are there any situations where your instructor could also be your examiner for your check ride? So this question came up at DPE school. For example, let's say Alan, Alan T, you and I are good friends. I do all your training, but I cannot do your check ride because it's considered a conflict of interest. However, the FA requires three hours of check ride prep. So there's a little bit of gray area where you could say, oh, Jason's my instructor. And then the last three hours, I go to a different instructor and the different instructor signs me off and Jason does my check ride. On paper, that makes sense. That's a lot of gray area though with that. Either way, I'd call it a conflict of interest. So um, that is that. Um, um, Isaac, I imagine you want to, um, where, yeah, where do you want to go? Uh, Scott, maybe if you'd reach out to, uh, Isaac, who's asking about some good flight schools. He's coming up from Mexico, wants to go to the U S and just wants to know where to go. Scott works with all our, all, all our flight school and our flight school partnerships and relationships, and especially knows those that are good with dealing with training visas and all that sort of stuff. Um, Kent C, you're absolutely right. You certainly could do that. <laughs> um, I'm just reading some more of these uh, uh, here. Again, guys, I can't take – there's a, too many people on this webinar take every, uh, every single uh, – every uh, single person here. So I'm going to, I'm going to take like, 
they're just all coming. I'm, I'm gonna take three more uh, and then I'm gonna wrap this up or I'm not gonna have a voice for my instrument and my commercial guys on Thursday night's webinar. Um, I need to get better and, and start feeling uh, a little bit uh, better. So let me take three more questions. And again, if you want more interaction like this, you become an online ground school member and we can do that. So I'm going to take three more questions and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Again, I apologize for um, that. Um, Stuart says, are there generally a lot of airspace questions on the practical exam? Absolutely, Stuart. And they're not all limited to just your area. Most of our guys here in Florida, you start on a Florida sectional chart. They ask you all the complex, Orlando, Tampa, Miami airspace. And the next thing you know, Stuart, they open up like a Denver sectional chart and say, oh, you know, look at look at this here. And oh, tell me about this. And now you're looking at a un, high terrain and different colors and all sorts of stuff. So airspace plays a very big role. And yes, your local airspace, but other airspace as well. You should be able to put your finger down on any type of airspace, any symbol on that sectional chart, and certainly uh, know what it is. Um, Daniel, next, this is the second question. Is it recommended to take the written exam prior to beginning flight lessons? Daniel, in a perfect world, yes. Let me tell you, Daniel, my dream student. Daniel, to make you my dream student, you would call me on the phone and say, Jason, hey, this is Daniel. Uh, I'm one of your ground school members here. I just completed your ground school. I've got my medical. I've got my written tests done. I've got the money set aside. I've made a proper budget. I've set 10 grand aside. I know it probably won't be 10 grand, but I've put 10 grand aside. I want to learn to fly. Now we get to do the fun stuff, which is just fly. The two biggest killers of flight training dreams are time and money. You either have the time, don't have the money. You have the money, you don't have the time. Let's take money out of the equation and make a proper budget for it. Make sure you set aside the time for it and get the written test, get the ground school, get all the medical, get all that done out of the way first. Daniel, that is my dream student. You will save so much time and so much money if you do it that way. Anybody on this webinar who's done it that way or hasn't done it that way can attest to you that they wish they did it that way. Absolutely. Guys, last question. Again, love you guys all to death, but I can't take every single question. I got another webinar. They'll be just as big and crazy in two days. Again, if you're not signed up for that one, I know this is mostly private pilot guys, but if you just want to hang out and learn some instruments and commercial pilot stuff, undergroundaviationseminar.com. Get signed up for that one um, as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, Rafter, very cool, my friend. Uh, I know Scott uh, knows him uh, very well. Um, um, Ashley, maybe you would take Raquel's question that came in right at 10 because it's a sales question. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of um, looking for that last good question. Again, if I don't take yours, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Um, let's see. Um, let me find what this question is. Um, I'm going to take Rafter's question here, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. He said, any chance you could post some scripts uh, to reference in our radio communications video? Um, I'm big on radio communications. You've got to be good at them, especially for your private pilot check ride. We have a free... Um, uh, we have a, a ton of great free videos out there on VFR radio communications. You can check out, my friend, but... My best advice is do not shy away from radio communications. You, you, you've got to be good at them. You've got to be not just current but proficient at your VFR radio communications. Challenge yourself by going to towered airports. Challenge yourself by going to pilot-controlled, uncontrolled airports. It's, it's that important. It's that vital. So listen, guys, I got to wrap this thing up. Otherwise, we would be up all night. You guys are just such a huge blessing uh, to myself my beautiful wife, Ashley, this great team here at M0A.com. Again, to get that bonus, groundschoolacademy.com. We can't wait to continue to work with you further, be your mentor, be your accountability partner, help you achieve your dreams in 2016. That is what we're here to do, to help make you a safer, smarter pilot. Guys, gals, enjoy the rest of your evening, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. See ya.